Saints Giants preview pro football focus. All right. We took care of business against the Panthers. Now, the next step, you can't go 5 and 0 without going 2 and 0, right? A little quick maths for you. The next step in the trek to win the division, win 10 games, make the playoffs is to beat the New York Giants in the Superdome at home. Bad news. The New York Giants are playing pretty well. Bad news. Tommy DeVito has the NFL world by storm, his agent, him, whoever else. Uh, you know, Tommy Cutlets, the whole thing. I feel like I'm watching my cousin Vinny every time I watch a Giants game. Bad news. Brian Dayball is on the other side of the sidelines facing Dennis Allen. That's not good. Bad news. Tommy DeVito can move around a little bit. I have a sneaky feeling Tommy DeVito is going to run quite a bit against the Saints. Bad news. Darren Waller. Supposed to be back. Saints haven't done very well against tight ends. So the Saints Giants Two weeks ago, I would have said this is basically Carolina all over again. Terrible team, uh, you know, weak roster, bad quarterback, whatever. And I would have been wrong because the Giants are playing some pretty good football. Tommy DeVito is playing some pretty good football. Brian Dayball, incredible coach, is doing some incredible coaching. And the Giants kind of do what the Saints don't want to face, right? They don't they don't want to face a mobile quarterback. They don't want to face a decent running attack. They don't want to face a team that blitzes. They can get after the quarterback. So the Saints should win this game. They're definitely the more talented team. They're definitely the better team, I would say. Maybe not by much, but can't argue. I would say the Giants are probably like, I don't know, 25th in the NFL, somewhere around there. The Saints are probably like mm, 17-ish. So a couple, couple spots in the power ranking. Saints should win, but as we know with the Saints, it's always up and down. You never know what you're going to get. We'll talk at length about the matchup, about the players, about the team. With the Pro Football Focus boys, let's go. It's at the New Orleans Saints. Tommy Cutlets going down wow. to New Orleans. Saints are favored by six here. Hmm. A lot of points. Against the uh, against Cutlets. Pretty... Is there? So this is just fascinating, right? Now, we'll say this about the line. I would assume the Giants are going to take a ton of money. Uh, the Giants are a media darling right now. The public loves them. And the Saints, not so much. The Saints always look bad. So... Maybe this is a spot where you and your initial thought is, whoa, it's a lot of points, but maybe that's good. Maybe that's what they want the initial thought to be. You know, maybe they want people to kind of back the Giants here and the Saints end up blowing them out. So the, the line actually gives me, the, the line actually makes me feel pretty good about this. You know, is there a bigger discrepancy in love for from the difference between Tommy DeVito and Giants fans in the nation versus Derek Carr in the Saints. <laughs> Man, good point. As, as, I mean, it has nothing to do with the breakdown of the game, but it, it is interesting how much, and it shows you how important winning is, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Tommy, Tommy Cutlass, Tommy DeVito is absolutely revered, absolutely loved in New York. Does anybody want to know why? Because he's winning. Derek Carr, not loved in New Orleans. Does anybody want to know why? Because they're losing. Because one is exceeding expectations, one is wildly missing expectations, and that goes to show what that can do to a fan base. <laughs> is there a bigger discrepancy? Everybody loves cutlets and everybody hates De Derek Carr. That's what I'm saying. saying. Except yes. the cars, the family. Yes. Yeah, David I would Carr say the him. Carr family loves Derek Carr more than Italian Americans love Tommy Cutlets. Yes. Or cutlets in general. Mm -hmm. Veal, chicken, any of them. I would say the Carr family. Yeah, I would. They love Derek. Yes. David Carr has basically made it his life's work to defend Derek Carr anytime a camera is pointed anywhere near his person. More than anyone else loves anything in the world. Yes. You know, they scour Twitter. They block you if you say anything bad about Derek. Yes. I've hey, been blocked. I forget who it was, but someone had brought up uh, a game early in Peyton Manning's career where he lost to David Carr's Houston Texans. And he seemed particularly upset by that. <laughs> it seemed to be, Peyton you know, did? Yeah, like Peyton, that clearly irked Peyton Manning that on his resume somewhere is a loss to David Carr's Houston. I remember uh, David Carr's first win. I remember the Texans' first win, I believe. Man, I hope I'm right. Maybe it's when their first win. Maybe it was. Someone, someone let me know in the comments. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it without. I remember being a youth, being a small child. And I remember being in my... Well, it would have been my parents' bedroom watching TV. It was like, you know, I grew up in a household where there's only there's only like one TV, maybe two TVs in the house. So if you wanted to watch it, you know, sometimes you were watching it in the kitchen or wherever, wherever the, the TVs were.
but I was watching the game in that room. I believe it was Houston versus the Cowboys. And the Cowboys were huge favorites, and I, and I believe Houston won. So someone go back and check. Should I do it? Let's check. Let's let's go ahead and check if, I, if my memory serves me correctly. I mean, am I the best or am I the best? Look at this. September 8th, box score, week one, and uh, their inaugural season, 2002. So I would have been like 12 or 13 years old. Dallas Cowboys, first game of the year. They win the game. There it is. Unbelievable. Let's look at the box score. The final, 19 to 10. Houston. Let's see if let's see if we can see what David Carr did. David Carr, 10 for 22. This is a tough time for the Cowboys. Quincy Carter, 13 for 30, 101 yards. David Carr wins. 10 for 22, 145 yards, two touchdowns. Who is the running back? Does it show? Uh let's see. Rushing. Who led in rushing for, for Houston? James Allen. Who the hell is this guy? James Allen. My goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, no notes, no nothing. We really are operating at a whole different level on this channel. Texans. It happens. Yeah. It's a tough one. Um, I just It just came to me. You've got the uh, cultural phenomenon that is Tommy DeVito mm. going up against Derek Carr, who has gotten to a fight with his skill position players, Every his center. Yes. Yeah. Everyone. He's City. almost been booed off the field the last two weeks. Yep. All that said. And he's been banged every, up, like beat yeah, up, injured, hurt. hurt. Like why? I'm kind of surprised that they haven't sat him down for Jameis for a couple of games. But yeah, all that said, two weeks ago, after he was getting booed early, he came back and yeah. played pretty well. And last week, it was a really rough start against the Panthers. He, he played good against the Lions after the whole booing thing happened. Last week, controversial. You know, the, for 90% of the game, he was terrible. Last couple of drives from the Saints were pretty good. So, you know, mixed bag, I guess. I would give that performance a D. I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't pause. I wouldn't give too much credence to the last couple of possessions in that one. Now, the, the Lions game, he did play good. He came back and they, you know, scored some touchdowns in the second half and actually scored in the red zone. Do you think the teams allow their sort of position in the hunt, you know, to, to disproportionately affect those types of decisions? Like... I feel like if the Vikings had three fewer wins this season, Jaron Hall would be starting this game. And I also feel like the Saints would have sat Derek Carr for a couple of games if they were randomly, you know, three games worse off than they are now. But because they're... I, I, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Why? If you're eliminated, if you're completely busted, if your season's the total joke, you're paying this guy $150 million. Just let him play it out. Like, what's the point of swapping to James? What's the best case scenario? Nothing. What, like, what is the best case? Maybe in the last week of the season, maybe the last two weeks of the season, if you're trying to do like a sign and trade for Jameis and boost his stock. But if you're a couple games out, like why, why would you make the switch? That I don't understand that logic at all. Like in the hunt for the division title, let alone the no, playoffs. Think, no, they go, no, we need Derek Carr. He's still our best chance to win. Let's, let's put him out there with his record. Because he's hurt or because you think Jameis would be better than him? Well, either. Certainly because he's they, hurt. No, they just paid. The, the hurt part. Maybe. You know, like if the season's over and you're kind of banged up, that probably would sit him. But as far as like a change to spark something or because of Jameis, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. Derek Carr, a ton of money. In recent history, Derek Carr has been a better I'm not saying you go James away from him random, like you would go away from him anyway. But like as soon as he's dealing with a rib injury, you'd be like, well, yeah, there's the no real difference maybe. between James and maybe. Derek. And yeah, Derek Carr. So let's make the change. Like Let's let him heal. The injury, and by the I way, he seems to be getting everybody pissed off. So another reason to sit his ass down. Okay, yeah, let's just all relax. I know is he's he's played better after being getting booed. So if you're in the dome, maybe <laughs> boo him. Let the I'll boos be there. rain down early here. Right? I'll really be really stick to him. Cheer cutlets <laughs> in the dome. The Lions played here a couple of years ago, and I remember being viciously hung over. I remember uh brutal i remember the so the games are at noon obviously and i, I woke up at like 10 45 i probably got in at like 4 a.m horrific game and there was two giants fans sitting next to me and man i mean that was a pretty tough four quarters not gonna lie that was the last time i remember and daniel jones lit us up that game another memory pull jones had like 400 something yards passing that game they might have won in overtime the giants beat us that game yeah and uh, Daniel Jones, he he went absolutely insane. 
I want to say it was like a comeback overtime kind of win. I think I'm really going to test the memory banks here, but I'm pretty sure Jones let a comeback. We go to overtime. They get the ball first. They go straight down and score. Ladies and gentlemen, should we test out my memory again? I'm telling y'all, I'm, I, listen, I'm going to say it right now. I'm the best in the world at this. I'm, I'm, how in the world can you watch a different channel? Honestly, how could you watch a different channel than this channel right here? Giants at the Saints, 27-21, Giants win in overtime. Oh, Daniel Jones had 402 yards passing. Remember what I said. And let's see if they, what happens in overtime. Oh, there you go. The Giants get the ball in overtime, go straight down the field, win the game. No one has the recollection. No one, no notes, no nothing here. I got nothing. I got some, I got some loose wires. I got uh, the Xbox controller. I've got this small miniature statue of a Boston Terrier. I don't even have a Boston Terrier. Okay, that's all I got for notes. And who 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 better than me? Maybe you trade for Tommy DeVito at the end of the season. Is is Derek the kind of guy that is motivated by spite, like Aaron Rodgers? Yes. I mean, no. Well, what? not spite, not spite. Derek Carr is not a spite guy, but Derek Carr is a I want everyone to love me kind of guy, and he would do anything, and he would sell his soul to be loved and he would sell his soul to be liked and he wants to be Drew Brees so bad not Drew Brees on the field he wants to be revered like Drew Brees he wants to be where he's walking through New Orleans and kids have have his jersey on you know that's what Derek Carr wants he desperately needs that wants that and, and that's what I think drives him it's the last couple of weeks he started chucking it downfield against Detroit at, I, I mean, feel the, like they're the cars as a hurt. family though are too sensitive for that to be a thing oh probably like yeah. they, they don't. I mean, They're they very feel sensitive. the very they feel sensitive. the spite. They just don't. It doesn't. I, no, we've got Darren Carr, who's the Twitter blocker. Yeah. You have David Carr, who's just delusional NFL analyst who thought yes. that Derek Carr was the most valuable player in the world. Well, he's the hype man in 2020. Yeah. The so biggest the, hype man. The of family all time. policeman, which is the Derek. No, Darren. Darren. Dave, Darren. That's yeah. it. So you got Darren. Darren, who's the the sort of the the bouncer, the cop, and then you've got David, who's the hype man. And then Derek, who is the front man. I think Derek's perfectly fine, though. Like, he's, you know, the easiest one out of all of them. Yeah. Because like, when he, you know, gives interviews and everything, like, you just tell he's passionate and wants to win and whatever. Agreed. I don't know. Yeah, agreed. But he does kind of yell at his team too much. Anyway. I mean, look, the Saints, Saints defense. The Saints defense is good. So this is not an easy task for Cutlets. But they're not good at what I think New York's going to try and do. They're not good at stopping the run. They're not good at stopping tight ends. They're not good at stopping mobile quarterbacks. And that's what they're going to try and do. And huge coaching advantage for the Giants. Um, who's been feisty more than good, you know? And again, yeah. like kind of like how much of his success has been things like Green Bay's defense being unusually situationally terrible, right? It's like, yeah, he executed the comeback drive. On the other hand, they, they kind of let him do it. I mean, I also mentioned when he his very first start, it was like, man, it's like Dable and Kafka, like they're – they were hyped up as offensive play callers and offensive geniuses or whatever. They were hyped up for reasons. Sometimes, sometimes coaches, really good coaches, this kind of favors them because, and this is strictly my, like my take here. I think sometimes coaches that are offensive geniuses or whatever, they can fall into just calling the same thing over and over. They can fall into, these are my players. This is my system. This is it, right? When something happens and they have to all of a sudden be a genius again, whether it's an injury or, or you know whatever, they almost like are passionate to take on the project. Like Sean Payton with Taysom Hill, you could see his passion in taking over that project. Kevin O'Connell with Josh Dobbs, right? It seemed like Kevin O'Connell was coaching Josh Dobbs harder than he ever coached Kirk Cousins. Brian Dable with Tommy Cutlets. These kind of situations, when you have a coach as good as Brian Dable, it almost like reinvigorates them to be that genius again. Kind of like a chess player, you know, where like if everything's going fine, the chess player is just playing chess. It's just whatever. But you back him into a corner and he's got to be a genius to find his way out. All of a sudden, the synapses start firing. So Dable is probably giving everything he's got to Tommy DeVito. And, and man, what a coach to have in your corner if you're Tommy DeVito reasons that we didn't see earlier in the year where they could not make any adjustments on offense they had the offensive line was getting whooped and they weren't doing anything creative to help daniel jones nothing was working and all of a sudden it was like okay they're calling a better game putting defenses on their heels a little bit more 
Tommy DeVito, good job by him to execute it, but he's kind of the beneficiary as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, they've also leaned into his running ability. He had, what, 70, 80 yeah. yards the other night, mm -hmm. um, both on design plus scrambles. So they're tapping into that skill set just a little bit as well. And then the uh, general hysteria around it, which has been which has been fun. Yeah. Um, led to some great fun. story. The Saints should be a better team here, though. They yeah, should. That's why they're favored by six. They've just, man, it's like, again, every time you want to buy into the Saints, it's like, ugh. Yeah. yeah. Disappointing. The, the Giants receivers were good against Green Bay. I think that's a, a big thing. If those guys can s consistently make plays for Cutlets, um, obviously Jalen Hyatt brings the speed, but Wondell Robinson had a great game with a few yeah, big plays good. there. Like, if, if that. Quick on the Saints, though. Like, last week, we had some personnel issues. You know, I went over the snap count and stuff in our recap for the game. Jamal Williams is banged up. James Robinson was signed. This has to be a Kamara game. Like, this has to be a game where he has five, six, seven catches. This has, especially if Olave doesn't play, which it, does, it doesn't look like he's going to. So, you know, Rashid Shahid should be back. Olave, I would consider doubtful right now. I'm filming this on a Friday. So, you know, things can change by Sunday for sure. But they got to lean on Kamara. And I don't know why Carmichael and Allen won't do that. You know, if you look at, that's another thing too, where if you if, if Olave doesn't play and Jamal Williams is banged up, Michael Thomas obviously, you know, on the IR, yeah, Rashid's coming back. But all of a sudden you're looking around and you're like, okay, who are the Saints skill players? You got Kamara. And then it's going to be some combination of Rashid Shahid, A.T. Perry, Surehands, Keith Kirkwood, uh, Lynn, uh, Lynn Bowden. Like, what, what, what's happening? You know, who's going to be involved? Who's going to who's going to be scoring these points for the Saints? So I see a low-scoring game. I, I do. If that group can coalesce around DeVito, then, you know, between that and his rushing ability, and that's it's very Josh Dobbs-like, right? Like, he's, he's athletic not. enough to be able to scramble and make plays and keep the chains going so that he can maybe buy, you know, just enough time to make a, a few passes to keep the thing moving. That rushing ability is important for him. Like, he is sneaky athletic. Yeah. Um, the one other thing I'll add here as far as, like, predicting Tommy DeVito's future, like, we don't know what that's going to look like. Um, when a Jake Browning has a breakout game, you're like, okay, he was a very good college quarterback who maybe figured things out. DeVito was this up and down roller coaster ride in college across two different schools. <clears throat> and they won some games at Illinois and the whole thing, but like I don't think that matters at all to TBH. Because when it comes to coaching, like who knows? You know, you you come into you come into a NFL situation, if you go to some random school that has bad coaching or bad players around you or a bad system, philosophy, culture, whatever. If you're the kind of player who can learn and can adapt and learn quickly and execute and you get a great coach like Brian, Brian Dable, I don't think your previous experience has anything to do with it. Same with Brock Purdy. You think Matt Campbell at Iowa State is anything like Kyle Shanahan? No. And Brock Purdy wasn't anywhere near as good as he is right now when he was at Iowa State. So what do you think the difference is? Oh, I don't know. That he's got the best roster in football and the best coach in football? You don't think maybe the San Francisco 49er culture and, and, and how they develop players has anything to do with that? No hate on Matt Campbell, LOL. But I, I don't put any stock in like how a player plays in college versus how they play in the NFL. It's almost like, like you're expecting that to regress a little bit. You're expecting Brock Purdy to regress, but it's Purdy similar to Browning where it's like he was a good college quarterback. Over but not, was, but good, was he? Going, I don't even know if you say that. He was about all DeVito. right. He <laughs> was an kinda, all right college quarterback. You know, Trust me. Trust me, I watch a lot of Iowa State. Okay, I watch a lot of Brock Purdy. I trust me. All right, he was average at best. Hit a little run here with the Giants. Yeah, but you got the hype of the Giants a good versus run, the though. Saints, who I hate picking. So, where are you going to go in this one? Giants. Yeah, they're on a three-game win streak with uh, with cutlets here. I'm just. I hate talking about this. It just makes me so hungry. My mom makes great chicken cutlets. I mean, I am going to say. That this, I, I think the line is telling me to trust the Saints. I think the Saints get a win here. I think it's a low scoring game. I think a lot of nothing happens. The Saints are banged up injury wise. They have to rely on Kamara. I don't know what would happen if he if they don't. Uh, I'm expecting a big game from him. Hopefully, Carr plays well. I'm hoping, I would guess it's something like 20 to 13. That would be my guess. 20 to 13. Low scoring. I don't think that I don't think New York does much, but I don't think I don't think the Saints do much either. 
I hope it's an efficient game from the Saints. I hope it's, you know, I, I wouldn't expect like these big explosive plays from the Saints in this game. I just want to see an efficient, consistent four quarters. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for Carr to be better. I'm looking for Alvin to get involved more. And I'm looking for us to start better and be a little bit more consistent. I don't want to see, you know, us go down 14 nothing. We can't score in the first half. And then we mount a comeback at the end. And I also don't want to see Tommy Cutlass run all over the place. We know what we're bad at, right? We know we're bad with mobile quarterbacks. So I'm hoping Allen doesn't let Tommy DeVito beat him. I'm hoping that if you're gonna if you're a defensive genius, you can't let Josh Dobbs, Tyson Badgent, you can't let Baker Mayfield, you can't let Tommy DeVito beat you. You have to you have to be smarter than that. There's a reason where Bill Belichick is so good against first first year quarterbacks because he's smarter than that. You know he's not going to let them beat him. So big game for Dennis Allen. Uh, what what I say? Twenty to thirteen. Twenty to thirteen. Saints get the win. Remember. Can't go 5-0 and without going 2-0. and Win this game, short turnaround, in L.A., Thursday Night Football. We may do something fun for that. We'll see. We may do like a live, maybe a live preview or a live recap or something. Or we may do like, we may, we may, we may do something. You know, a little watch along for a quarter or something. So stay tuned on the socials. All the socials down below. If you have a good idea, put it in the comments below. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next video. 20 to 13, who dat?